What's going on guys? This is Empty Box, and I'm reviewing a bowling game. Premium bowling. Bowling. That is premium. So as to not appear totally entirely random, some backstory. With this whole situation going on in this world, I'm having bowling withdrawals because I enjoy bowling. So I guess the next best thing is going to be a bowling video game because... I can't wait another three, four, five, six years to go bowling again. So here I am, reviewing a bowling video game. So here's the short review. This game is probably the best bowling simulator you are going to get. If you like bowling, it will probably have an appeal to you, and you will deal with the not-so-great parts. But if you don't like bowling, or if you're just a casual bowler, go down to the bowling alley, throw some house balls, toss a few drinks back, or whatever... You probably won't care for the game as much because the game is overall very basic besides the actual act of bowling. The only story mode here is the one that every bowler asks themselves, and that is, who do they think they are? You can play this game on a standard 2D setup where you basically set your power, your spin, and then you aim, and then you try and keep your aim as it kind of jiggles around a little bit to try and make you a little bit more inaccurate so it's not just lock it in and keep doing the same thing over automatic 300s for days. I don't really play this way. I prefer the VR version, which plays a little bit differently myself, but this is an option if you don't have VR and you prefer to play this way. If you do play in VR, it's basically Wii Bowling Simulator Edition. That's how I prefer to play the game, and now, of course, because motion controls have their limitations, there are different leaderboards that can be filtered in this game between desktop gameplay and VR gameplay, because obviously the VR scores are a good bit lower. Uh, online play consists of matches uh, versus another player, as well as leagues, where you basically are doing a one-week leaderboard series of three games on a specific oil pattern, with a limited number of attempts. And that's basically what this game is. It's bowling. If you like bowling, you will probably like this game. If you don't like bowling, you'll probably be like, okay, yeah, I played it for five minutes and that was that, whatever. So yeah, there is a demo available on Steam. I would highly suggest you go ahead and check it out if you're interested. Uh, the demo is basically 10 games and I'm sure by 10 games of gameplay, you'll figure out whether or not you like this game or not. But anyways, on to a longer review. The thing that makes this game work is bowling. Bowling itself. I mean, who would have thought that a bowling game works because of bowling? But uh, start with the bowling balls. They're customizable. You can create your own textures if you really want to. So you could, in theory, replicate whatever bowling ball you want if you so desire to spend the time. You can also change the colors, the shininess, and the weight. Uh, as well as the overall hook and length ratings, basically how far a bowling ball gets down the lane before it starts to hook. Uh, while it's a bit simplistic compared to real-world bowling, and, you know, you don't have different shapes and all that stuff, which, you know, nuts and bolts, it does provide a meaningful differentiator between bowling balls, which means that you're going to have a reason to use a different bowling ball in a different scenario, which is how bowling works. For the you guys who aren't as familiar with bowling, not all bowling balls are the same. They're designed to do different things, and that becomes very important in the grand scheme of things. So that's why I'm mentioning you can do this, because I think that's really freaking cool. This is particularly important as there's multiple different oil patterns available, as you'd expect by now. You, know, you have your house shots, your short patterns, your long patterns, your flat patterns, your cliff patterns. You got just, you got madness. You got all sorts of pat patterns, and they break down as you'd expect as you throw the ball down the lane and play in a specific area. Uh, for you guys who maybe aren't as familiar with bowling, an oil pattern will substantially change the way you have to play the lanes. A longer oil pattern will force you to play more in the middle of the lane, while a shorter oil pattern will push you closer to the gutter to play in the optimal area of the lane. A flatter oil pattern, where the oil is basically the same from the left side of the lane to the right side of the lane horizontally, will be significantly harder than a shot where there's more oil in the middle compared to a lot less on the outside. This is where things really come to work because this creates the actual gameplay because it's more than just, for example, the Wii Bowling thing where you just throw the ball straight really hard and smash all the pins. This makes it actually into something that resembles the sport of bowling, if you will. 
And of course, it goes without saying, different oil patterns can very much benefit different types of bowling balls. And then the part that impressed me the most is the physics, because bowling is all about the physics. And it's an area where a lot of bowling games fail. Oftentimes, you either see bowling games where throwing straight at the pins as hard as you can is way too effective. Again, I'm looking at you, Wii Bowling. It's fun, but it's, you know, a simple arcade-style bowling game. Or you see bowling games where the pins just look wrong. The ball and the pins just don't interact with one another correctly. Everything looks very stiff, canned, fake. And, and that's really where this game impressed me the most. Just like real bowling, it's not just about getting the ball to the pocket. It's all about how the ball goes through the pins. And you know that when you leave a 10 pin, you know what happened. Because if you're into bowling, you just... You know, see, is it a flat pit? Is it a flat ten? Is it a ring ten? You know, what's going on? How did the ball come off the deck? And all of those things. And yes, I like that. I like that a lot. Then even beyond this, the physics are actually customizable, so you can adjust how much friction there is on the lanes, how well, or how fast the oil breaks down, how much friction there is on the oil. You know, how the pins interact. You can make them extra super bouncy, so like you hit the pins and everything just explodes. Uh, I'm gonna put down in the description a link to a Steam form thread uh, where this guy suggests some custom physics that are honestly even better than what comes default from you know out of the box. Uh, just go ahead and pop those in if you end up playing this game and you're looking for a more realistic experience. And you know, I just have to say I'm really pleased with the way the game plays from the bowling perspective, especially with those custom physics because it really just... It makes it a very, very solid bowling experience at home. I mean, yeah, it's not real bowling, but I can't go to the bowling alley right now, so here I am reviewing a bowling video game. Now, as for the things I don't like about this game. First off, the controls. While I certainly will improve with time and more practice, I find it very hard to be consistent on either the motion controls in VR or in desktop use. It's partly nature of the beast, especially with the motion controls, but there just isn't really any feedback to help you understand why you have a 650 RPM spread on your revs between two different throws that you feel like you did the same on. Then there's also the targeting, which this is something that I personally just find very weird. Typically in the real world, I aim at the arrows. That's where I kind of base my aim off of as many bowlers do because it's a lot easier to hit something that's you know 15 feet in front of you rather than hit something that's you know 40 feet down the lane or 60 feet down the lane you know well yeah you're going to be looking at your break point you know at advanced level and then you're going to drop back to the targeting line here in this game i find i just go ahead and target directly at the break point and stare directly at the break point because it seems like there's a little bit of assist built in where just to account for the motion controls, it kind of helps keep things on target relative to your aim. And when you actually bring your target closer, it feels like you have a wider variance than if you have your target further down lane. For example, shooting at a spare in this game, I would go ahead and aim directly at the pin. Whereas in the real world, I'm going to be looking at the arrows and aiming off of that because you're going to be a lot more consistent than staring at something clear the heck at the other end of the lane which for those of you guys who aren't bowlers next time you go bowling try looking at the arrows rather than at the pins like a lot of people just look at the pins and they never think to look closer to them because it's the natural thing to do but trust me if you make that change you'll bowl better so bowling tips with empty box yeah that's a thing now but that's relatively minor compared to the fact that i don't know where i am at all between the consistency issues brought on by the controls, the limited resolution playing in VR, the limited accuracy in the motion controls, it's already hard enough to repeat a shot from shot to shot, and then you add in a difficult oil pattern. You know, having no idea really where you're standing to, you know, a precise degree, where you're targeting to a precise degree is really kind of problematic. You basically just kind of point out there and you're kind of guessing, you know, when you're making your adjustments and you're standing, you know, VR, you know, you just move a little bit to the left, move a little bit to the right. Like you're just trying to get more or less everything to look the same that it did the previous shot and go from there. But 
it just doesn't work out. There's a reason why there's, you know, you aim by the board. There's a reason why there's arrows on the lane. Like, these things exist for a reason, and this game kind of forces you to more or less throw that out the window a bit because it just doesn't work that way. I think that would be relatively easy to fix, though, just by having a little readout on the targeting reticle that tells you what board you're aiming at, as well as putting a little dot underneath the player uh, in VR as well as on the monitor. This is also an issue, which would show you where you're standing. That way you know for the next shot, if you came in a little bit light, didn't make it to the pocket or whatever, or you know, runaway Brooklyn, you can make an adjustment based off of that, which is how things actually work. Whereas in this game, it's just kind of a shot in the dark and hopefully you end up making the right adjustment just because it's just kind of a little weird. Like, I feel like this is one of those design decisions that there was a conscious, you know, decision to go ahead and make it so that way you basically only had area targeting, like wide area targeting. And I think that would probably be done because a lot of bowling games end up turning into 300 fests where, you know, you stand on this board, you throw at this board, automatic strike every single time. Whereas I feel like this game has enough things going on that it's not a 300 fest. You know, you look at the leaderboards like, yeah, people are bowling 300s, but it's not one of those games where everybody and their brother is bowling a 300 and thus taking all the fun, skill, and challenge out of it. So I, I would just like to see more precision brought into the aiming, or at least, again, kind of going back to the controls, more feedback would make a big difference, and I think would improve this game even more to really create a fantastic bowling experience beyond what they've already created. You then have some smaller little stuff. Uh, for example, if the ball bounces out of the gutter, you need to mark it as zero. Am I the only one who cares about the rules here? The rules are that the ball goes in the gutter, it's a dead ball, it's a zero. If it bounces out, hits a pin, it's still a zero. That pin comes back standing up. All right. There's also the fact that if you throw a gutter on your first ball, it sweeps the rack and you get an entire re-rack. You know what? These things are minor. Like a ball popping out of the gutter doesn't happen every single time. So I'm not going to say the game's literally unplayable, but I would like to see that fixed just because... It's a basic rule. Like, that should be fixed. That shouldn't be a thing. I'd also like to see, you know, some stat tracking, such as averages, conversion rates for certain spares, you know, averages on an oil pattern, you know, per basis. Uh, you know, that stuff would be nice. Uh, there's also the fact that there is a commentator in this game, and as with basically every low-budget development game ever created, the commentator gets very repetitive. He doesn't sound all that great. An effort was obviously made. Like, they attempted to. I will commend them on that. But by the 87,000th time you hear this guy say, Barney Rubble, you're going to be like, you gots to go, man. And just turn him off. Turn the in-game music off. Play your own music. And just enjoy. Because you know what? That's what the game does best. And that's why I say if you like bowling, you should go ahead and check out the demo. Because as a bowling experience and as a bowling game, it works really well. If you're looking for something that's beyond that and, you know, is really fun and you can play around with all the physics and do silly things and, you know, you don't care about oil patterns and different bowling balls, like, it's not really going to appeal to you. It's a very bare bones simulator style experience and that's where the game shines so if that's what you want that's what you'll get uh, so again there's a steam demo go ahead and check it out if you're interested in it you got 10 games you'll figure it out whether or not you're interested in it but uh overall yeah it's premium bowling it's bowling that's premium and i like it it's fun and it is a much needed bowling fix anyways hope you guys enjoyed all right bye Continuing with a strike. The machine is started. The sight is fixed on a double. That was bad. Smelly lead to convert. Magnificent. 
cleaned up on that one well. A stunning strike. The last roll proved decisive. I'm all in for a double. Less than perfect. Pins three, six, and ten to convert. A pity.